Hey guys, Centurion here at ESO Vault. Dragon's Dogma is definitely a game that doesn't hold your hand and there's a lot to unpack here, so let's get started. The first thing I want to bring up is this business about there being only one save file. While you can only have one character saved as you're playing, I don't think it's true, strictly speaking, that there's only one file. The game is going to save your progress automatically and that can definitely work against you when it does this at a bad time. But you also have an inn save, and I'm talking about the kind of inn where you pay them gold and you spend the night. This inn save is your lifeline. Anytime something goes horribly wrong and you wind up getting screwed by the auto save feature, you can always load your inn save. That's why it's important to spend the night at an inn fairly frequently so that inn save isn't too far back in time leaving you with a bunch of content you have to repeat. The next thing I want to talk about is how to tell time in the game. This ring with the sun is your clock. The sun travels counterclockwise starting here at sunrise and over here is sunset. That'll give you a good idea of how much daylight you have left as you go about your business. Speaking of going about your business, a routine part of that business will be juggling your inventory. As you travel through the wilds, your main character will constantly need to offload inventory to avoid getting weighed down. I like to give that inventory to the lowest level pawn I've hired, and that's because that pawn will be the first to go. When you dismiss that pawn, all the items in their inventory that you loaded them down with will automatically go into your storage. They don't go with the pawn. Careful though, any equipment you equip on that pawn will go with them, and this includes any weapons you equip them with. As a rule, let the Arisen that created that pawn take care of equipping them. So, when you find one of these in the middle of nowhere and it's time for a new pawn, dismiss the fully loaded one and hire a new pawn with an empty inventory. Two problems with one solution. Perfect. Now you have an empty inventory and a new pawn and you can keep going on your adventure. Let's talk about what you'll need on that adventure. There are some items that may be hard to come up with while you're out on the road. Food isn't one of them. There are plenty of wild animals to provide that. But to feed you and your crew, you're going to have to set up camp. And you can't just set up camp anywhere. You need to find a campfire and you need to have a camping kit in your inventory. I actually have two. I have one and my main pawn has another. I keep one on me because if my main pawn is killed, guess what happens to the camping kit? It's not destroyed, but it does go into my storage. And a fat lot of good it does me there while I'm way out here. These aren't consumable, but they can be destroyed if I'm attacked in the middle of the night. I have yet to have that happen, but I'm pretty thorough about killing monsters near my campsite. So don't be afraid of the dark, unless you're out of lantern oil. Then go ahead and be terrified. You can make lantern oil in the wild like I'm doing here, but don't count on having the ingredients when you need them. Try to make oil before you leave town, or buy oil if you have to, but make sure everyone in your party has a spare. You especially don't want to find out you don't have any oil when you're deep underground in some cave. So you've seen me traveling on foot so far, but there's actually a faster way to travel. On the left side of my map, all on its own, is a small bright area surrounded by blackness. That's the checkpoint rest town. I got there by taking an ox cart. Since I didn't walk there, the path to the town isn't mapped. I know what you're thinking, an ox cart doesn't exactly sound fast. But as soon as you get on board, you have the option to fall asleep and time will pass almost instantly. One problem with ox carts is that they seem to get attacked about half of the time. When that happens, you'll wake up short of your destination and you'll have a fight on your hands. Well, it looks like I made it without any trouble this time. If the ox cart isn't there when you want to use it, interact with the ox cart signpost. It gives you the option to wait. Then the cart will be there. If it's not ready to leave, interact with the sign again. Other than being attacked, the ox cart has another drawback. It only goes to a few towns. Those towns will act as hubs and from there you'll set out on foot. You may have noticed that I've appeared as three different vocations in this video. And now I'm standing before you as a thief, my fourth vocation. I started out as an archer, then I switched to sorcerer, then mystic spearhand, and now I'm playing as a thief. You heard me right by the way, I switched to sorcerer without having played a mage first, there are no prerequisites in the game. I did the quest to find a staff, and when I turned that quest and the staff in, sorcerer was unlocked. Unlocking each vocation doesn't involve any prerequisites. You can swap to any one of the four base vocations at any time. For the advanced vocations, you'll need to do a quest where you find a special weapon associated with that vocation. After playing for a little while, swapping vocations will seem easy. It's so simple as a matter of fact that in the starter town, the innkeeper handles the job. 
Larger towns have a vocation guild. The guy you talk to in Vernworth is standing right behind me. You want to talk to this guy to do anything with adding or swapping skills and augments. You can swap skills at a campfire, but you can't add anything you haven't already purchased. So be sure to handle all of that before leaving town. When I was recording this, I actually got attacked by goblins. Here, in the middle of town. That's never happened to me in the game before. So apparently the game world does in fact change slightly over time. Somebody should clean him up. He's really starting to smell. While I'm here in town, maybe I should unload some of these books I'm carrying. Nope, don't get rid of any books you find. Don't sell them, don't drop them, don't throw them in the river, whatever. You can put them in your storage, but don't get rid of any of them. Don't give them to an NPC that asks for them. At least not until you figure out who gets the genuine article and who you can pass off a fake to. There's a guy in the checkpoint rest town that will make forgeries for you. And some NPCs will unknowingly accept a fake book, allowing you to give the same book to another NPC. You'll notice I have only one copy of some of these books. They're the rare ones, and they're the ones you'll need to make copies of. You can look online and find out who gets what, but in the meantime, don't get rid of any books. Okay, let's spend some time talking about pawns. Pawns are your key to success and maximum enjoyment of the game. First, pawns can be a huge help guiding you on quests. If you want help on a specific quest and it's time to get a new pawn, set that quest as the active quest. Then, when you search for a pawn in the rift, be sure the quest knowledge box is checked. When a pawn has knowledge of your active quest, a glowing hand will appear next to that pawn's name. Push up on the D-pad and that pawn will guide you the next step in that quest. Since I play with an Xbox controller on PC, Go is up on the D-pad for me. I don't know what system you're playing on, so I don't know what Go is for you. It's definitely worth going over the other D-pad commands because they all relate to pawns. And again, I don't know what the buttons are for you, but I have to reference them somehow. Activating help will cause any pawns with the ability to heal you to do so. Many times pawns will already be on their way to the rescue, especially any with the kind-hearted inclination. But if they're taking their sweet time, hit that help button. The to me command will cause pawns to come to you if they're drifting too far afield. Be on the lookout for pawns that are stuck. You may have to pick them up and carry them away from where they became stuck. Last but not least is the wait command. This actually may be the most important command. A lot of the time I'm doing something that may be risky and I don't want my pawns to follow me. Usually this involves water. Pawns can be, well, pretty dumb around water. If I fall in the water and die to the brine, the game just respawns me on dry land. One or more pawns dying to the brine is a little more serious, especially if I'm nowhere near a riftstone. So when I'm jackassing around trying to pull off a dangerous maneuver, I'll tell the pawns to wait, preferably somewhere away from the edge that may claim my life. Telling pawns to wait at appropriate times can save you a lot of headaches. Finally, I want to talk about affinity. Pawns have a hidden stat called affinity, which is basically how much they like you. And based on how high your main pawn's affinity is, you can get a different ending to the game. You can increase your main pawn's affinity by buying or improving their gear, getting them a haircut or a tattoo, not leaving them hanging when they want to high five you after a battle, and a few other things. When your pawn has high affinity, their cheeks will get a very obvious blush. They'll smile at you and their dialogue will change. You can see here that my main pawn has high affinity. NPCs in the game will also have affinity. Ulrika is showing high affinity as well. Note the cheesy anime cheek glow. You can raise an NPC's affinity by doing their quest line, taking any escort quests you may get from them, and also by giving them flowers. As a side note, if you give flowers to vendors in the shops, you can get a discount on gear. Well guys, I could easily make this an hour long video if I kept going with these tips, but I think a lot of them should be left for another video. I want to do a video that's about how to handle caves. If you're just starting out in the game, I can pretty much guarantee that caves are more complicated than you think they are, and understanding how to play them will greatly enhance your enjoyment of the game. Combat could be multiple videos. Well, that's all I've got for right now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video about some of the things that I learned the hard way in Dragon's Dogma 2. If you did, be sure to hit the like button, and if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. Have a great day and enjoy your adventures in Dragon's Dogma 2.